everybody. Welcome back. Today I thought we would spend some time talking about how you can use fabric in your journals, <coughs> even if you're not uh, a sewer. <laughs> uh, because when I started this, um, I did not know how to sew. I didn't even have a sewing machine because years and years ago I had attempted to sew. I hated it. Um, so I didn't even own a machine. And so I first started out um, just doing some hand stitching. And I think the reason I fell in love with it is because with the junk journals, <clears throat> nothing has to be perfect, um, which really gave me the freedom to go ahead and um, play around with it. And now it's probably my favorite um, medium to work with is the fabrics, um, incorporating that in the journals. So I thought it would be fun to spend some time um, going over some ideas you may or may not know um, how to, to create um, using fabrics within your journals. So the first thing I would say is um, I want to do some ruffles. I don't have any made. I've used them all, um, so I don't have one to show you, but I'm going to show you guys how to make ruffles. Now with the ruffles, I definitely recommend a lightweight cotton because it will feed through the machine <clears throat> much easier and you don't want to add the bulk within the journal on some of the heavier fabrics. So I, I go with a lightweight. Um, this one's kind of like a like polyester cotton blend. I'm not mad on this. Um, this was a, a purchase I made online and I don't like purchasing fabrics online because I know what I'm looking for <clears throat> and often you can be misled which is what happened here. It's a pretty print and I won't throw it out but I will make some um, ruffle using that. And then um, a lot of times I go around, I'm not now with the lockdown, but I've acquired so much fabric because of, <clears throat> in the past, going to thrift stores and, um, excuse me guys, I'll get the throat lozenge, um, thrift stores and then here car boots um, because a lot of the people here will do house clearances and what you find is the older generation tended to uh, be more into the sewing than probably younger people so when they pass away they'll just clear out the house and I found a lot of fabric. Um, the downside to that is I end up with a lot of fabrics that don't necessarily coordinate. Um, <clears throat> if I was back in the US I'd probably be broke um, or even broker than I am <laughs> if I was near Joanne's fabric where you can buy pieces that coordinate. I mean, that's my dream is <clears throat> to get back there where I can actually go and purchase some of those beautiful fabrics. Um, okay, so ruffles are going to be one of the things I'm going to go over with you. And I'm going to have to get my camera set up so that um, you can see from the stitching point of view. I've done this in the past, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to revisit in case any of you have not seen those tutorials. <clears throat> Snippet rolls. Um, this is one I did ages ago, and I just kind of liked it because it had incorporated, often I run across um, embroidered tablecloths or napkins that maybe have a tear in it or stained <clears throat> and I just cut out the little images and I, I make the snippet rolls and then add those pieces in. So I'll explain some tips about these snippet rolls um, once we get into that. And then this is my favorite one I ever made um, and this one is mine. As you can see those are my colors and this fabric <clears throat> excuse me, I had purchased at Walmart years ago and I so wish I would have bought more because I've managed to take all of those little butterflies and it's just a really pretty piece and I'm hoping um, it's probably not going to, well I might could do it as a closure to it, I could. I think I'll make myself a traveler's notebook because I am a traveler and places to wander. Because you guys know that's my 
my passion is is being out in nature and so this this would be beautiful for a um, closure for a a TN. So I think I'm going to do that for myself this year as a treat. <clears throat> so that's a, a another way you can do snippet rolls and then you can use fabric to make pockets. But what I like often I'll use just a single um, pattern, but I actually prefer the snippet rolls and then cut those down and use them as pockets. Um, the only thing I would say when I make these, you can see all the stitching on the back. Um, generally what I'll do is make these in, I've started making them really wide now, probably, I don't know, they're four to six inches wide, and I'll show you that when we get started. Uh, I'll just I'll do the stitching, but then when you come back and cut these into pockets or tabs, you often will need to take it back to the machine because sometimes you'll have a little piece like that sticking up and it, it just it's just nice to go over it once you've cut it down to size. So yeah, that's another thing you can use these for is, is you, you can cut it off and then you can fold it over and glue that as like a tab within the journal. So that's what I thought we would do, um, guys. And so I think I'll start with the ruffles. I'll get my camera set up over at the machine and I'll go through with you. Um, how to sew those, um, what you would want to have. I find it really useful if you've got one of these little, this is like a little piercing tool that I bought from Stampin' Up! years ago, and it's a nice heavy duty one. I find it really easy to feed the um, fabric through the machine with this, but depending on what you like, I try to keep my ruffles about an inch wide. <clears throat> you can do it any width. And see this this fabric just doesn't even turn tear very well. So um so I I generally would just get my fabric all torn into one inch strips and then sit down at the machine and just knock them out because it doesn't take that long. So that's what we're gonna do guys. So let me get some strips ready. And then I'll move you over to the machine, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back. I'm hoping I can do this okay. My, I don't have the best setup here for, for my machine, but we're going to make an attempt on this. So you can see I've got my strip of fabric. And you're just going to start by folding that over. It's probably about a quarter of an inch. Get that under there. And this is where the little tool will come in handy because you can just take that and push it under there. So let me get that straight. Start off. And then you're just going to feed that through. <coughs> And it just takes time, but it would go slightly quicker if I wasn't trying to film this. But where I've got the, the camera, um, it's a bit awkward for me, but I'll show you when we get done here. Sorry about that. There you go. So now you can see that's that's come out really nice. And like I said, you can get much quicker. Um, <laughs> it's just where I've got this camera at. I can't feed it through as quick. But let me just do a couple of them, and then then we'll move on to the snippet roll.
and that, don't be afraid to um, to try some different color uh, thread as well. I've used black in the past, and the black really does come out very pretty on um, on the lighter materials. So I'll do one more, and then I'll get the things together for the snippet roll because that'll take some gathering. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see a little bit easier here how those have come out. I think they're really pretty. So I'm going to set those to the side because I've got my work cut out for me later today. I'm just trying to dwindle down some of this fabric into items that I can just grab. Alright, so let's get on with the snippet roll. What I've decided to do, I've got some of this fabric I've had for a while, and this is about a... 22, about a 30 inch strip, right? And I picked up <clears throat> some of this lace, which is quite a wide, yeah, about five inches this is. And um, so what I'm going to do is just first stitch a layer of this over. this fabric. Now you can use anything. Somebody had asked me about this um, fairly recently about um, a project I had done about the backing. Do not get hung up. It's just that I probably would not normally use um, an expensive fabric because most of this is going to get covered, but it's just that I've got this. I've kind of... <laughs> You know, I've done everything I really want to do with it. So this is actually what I've got left over is probably going to just be cut up. And um, I'll make some pockets and various things. I might do one more journal, soft cover journal with it. But you can see I've got quite a bit. So don't worry about it. If you've only got a sheet, do that. Because what you're trying to make use of is... This. this is our box of scraps. I've got scrap. I mean, this one's so dainty. I shouldn't even cut that up. Oh, maybe I won't. <laughs> I got that, and I know that has to be so old. I better kick that out. Okay. Anyways, this is all my little uh, bits of scrap, guys, and it's just overwhelming. And then some of these, I'll be honest, I don't even think I'm going to use these. It's not my thing. So I think what I'm actually going to do is pull some of these out. And I might just send these into some Happy Mail. Now that's a pretty piece there. But, um, yeah, you know, sometimes you buy things. Like I said, this was one of those online purchases. And I... I really regretted that. I should have just sent it back, but I didn't. So, what I want to do is just try to keep... I mean, I've got oodles of this, Tim Holtz. And I just want to try to keep the same kinds of colors, um, which most of my colors are pretty... Um, soft pastel. See, I've got that strip. That would make really pretty just to cut those and add. But I think what I'm going to do, guys, is not talk and just um, kind of start cutting up and laying down. And I've also got... of these that I had cut when I did the um, scrap. 
preppy fabric cover, you know, using the stabilizer. Now, I haven't done that on Patreon, so if you're interested in that, you'd have to go to my YouTube channel. Um, <clears throat> so I've still got these left over, so I'm, I think I'm just going to, just like I said, trying to keep in with some of the same colors. Maybe I'll go with the peaches. But then again, you get that one, you know, I've got a real mix. That, that, that does, that's come out nice, so I don't think I'm going to worry too much. So, obviously, this long of a piece, I'm not going to lay it out the whole length, because you would have to pin it down. Um, otherwise, when you move it, it's going to all fall. So, I would probably only start focusing on about the first two inches because otherwise you're not going to get it to the machine. But the first thing I do is, is get this stitched together. So let me do that and then we'll, we'll just gather up a few pieces and then I'll show you on the machine again. Okay guys, I have went ahead and cut this down to about a 15 inch strip because the other was a little bit tricky to work with that length. So. Um, you know, it's just I'm <clears throat> really restrictive on the space here. So I've got my bag of scraps and fabrics, so I'm just going to try to pull out some of these guys and just lay them um, around. And I'm not going to worry too, too much. Um, you know, just, you don't want it to all be square. And then I'm going to come back with little laces over. And it just uh, will all start to come together. That's a piece of sorry silk. I'll get that in there somehow. And that's what you're going to start doing, is just building up whatever colors that you want to keep. And this is where I said, you know, it really is, it's nice if you've got several designs in the same colors, but unfortunately I don't, so... And I don't want to just waste the scraps that I do have, so I just kind of make it work. Um, and this is great if you're doing like an eclectic um, journal where it's not all really color coordinated. These are really pretty to make tabs and pockets with. So that you can see how kind of how it's coming together. And if you've got any strings, I'd try to get those off. But I, I just I really find it relaxing to make these. So let me just get over to the machine because we better. I don't want to get too much on here because it's going to all see it's going to come off when you get over over there. So let me move the camera. Okay, guys. Hopefully you can see okay from there. Let me see if I can move this. I'd rather it be up a little bit higher. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can get a better. I'm having to uh, just prop, <laughs> prop things up here, guys, so bear with me there. I think you're going to see better if you can do it that way. There we go. All right. So again, let's, there's no, do not get into a pattern. I would just say that um, because you don't want it to end up, you know, it, it just needs to look really random, so I'm just going to take a couple pieces to get started. So you're just going to put these pieces down and stitch, and then come back over it and over it and over it. 
and uh, you can do it in lines, you can do it crazy stitching. I would crazy stitch it, but the camera is right here, so I can't do that. Um, so I'm just going to have to try to make the best of it here. Just trying to tack <clears throat> all the pieces down and then this is why I said when you come back and cut it you'll probably find that there's pieces that you'll want to go back and stitch down but it's much easier when you're dealing with um, just a small piece versus uh, like this one's quite a large you know strip I'm dealing with Okay guys, I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to do this piece and then I'll show you how it looks at the end. Okay guys, this is how it's ended up looking and I just carried on laying down my fabrics kind of as the base and then I came back at the end and added all these little bits and scraps of um, laces that I've been acquiring. And I like that because, as I said, I don't know what I'll use these for yet. I might cut them up for tabs. They might be pockets. Later, I might add some uh, buttons. You know, if I made this into a pocket, I might stitch a few buttons to it. But I just kind of get these ready in the drawer, and then I finish them off as I'm doing each project. So I'm hoping that that gives you some ideas on... on um, a couple of ways on how you can use your fabrics in the journals. Um, so if you've got any questions, let me know, guys. I hope that you all are safe and well, and I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye.